Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Jara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, and Maz Jupp, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis, and Jack Whitehall. We start with a round called the headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. But what does SCDC stand for? Is it is he telling people the only two people that won't be affected by the cuts? <laughs> Samantha Cameron and David. <laughs> <laughs> is it stop claiming disability, chavs? <laughs> Is it, uh, is he just simply going, sandwiches, Clegg, drinks, Clegg? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what the answer is, but there's certainly two C words there, aren't there? I <laughs> 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 think he's forgotten his hand puppets. This is a little act he does called Saint Cameron, Devil Cameron. <laughs> oh, I'm just an ordinary bloke, just cares about the common man. Oh, burn the poor. Oh, stop it, Devil Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> is it to do with, in fact, the child benefit cuts? Is that what it's to do with? <laughs> well, is yeah. it save cash, don't copulate? <laughs> is he quite simply saying starving children don't care? <laughs> is it everyone he doesn't like? Socialists, chavs, dossers, and the Chinese? <laughs> He had a year out there. It, it didn't go yeah. well. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely I have to move you across. Wait, 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 oh. wait, I'm done. Seriously, is it spending cuts to dominate conference? Yes, it is. Very good. Cool. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was spending cuts to dominate conference. The Conservatives had outlined plans for the biggest shake-up of welfare reform in 60 years, with Chancellor George Osborne saying cuts must be fast and deep to avoid a decade of debt. What do we think of the cuts? The big thing they've done is to cut um, benefits to the middle classes, isn't it? Because they know that child benefit for the middle classes will simply be spent on olives and lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> Do you know, speech? Did you hear his speech? Oh, he bitter. said, just over the horizon is the Britain we're trying to build. What, France? <laughs> <laughs> they're keen to get people out of the poverty trap, that's what they're saying. I was quite sure what the poverty trap was, whether it in fact was as this hole in the ground with uh, some Finder's mm. crispy pancakes in the bottom <laughs> covered over the top with scratch cards. <laughs> uh, but now, because of the re adverse reaction to this, they say that they may give tax credit to married people, raising again the spectre of unmarried people, then we go, well, do we have to marry uh, in order to get the tax credit? Because as we all well, know, all marriages right. born out of tax credits <laughs> are the most loving marriages of all. <laughs> Stories have got a point. They have got a point. There was a woman in the paper the other day, loads of kids living off the state, and see um, the Queen. That said, the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Philip's going to have to get a job, but luckily, right now, they're looking for people like him in immigration control. <laughs> How are government ministers practicing what they preach? The minister who's doing the most is this guy called Eric Pickles, isn't it? Yes, he's who is the, the minister for communities or something, isn't it? Yeah, and he, is, he yeah. has told his staff that they have to use the stairs rather than lifts. <laughs> that they're not allowed tea in meetings and they've got to turn the heating down. And when you look at him, you think, you say that's because you want to save money, but it's more than likely that actually the lift's broken because you've been in it. <laughs> there are no biscuits because you've eaten them. And you don't, you don't need heating because your body has got its own fat-filled ten-tog duvet. <laughs> To be, fair, to be fair to Eric Pickles, he is, the, he is the ideal person to be community secretary because he's used to having people around him, largely because of the gravitational pull. <laughs> <laughs> Just when helping look, him walk. When you look at that photograph, does it not look like they've airbrushed a foot-long sandwich out of the shot? <laughs> By the way, if you want to join in the Eric Pickle satire game, just point at the picture and make your own sentences up involving belt tightening. Uh, <laughs> not that he looks like Matt Lucas, just quite simply going, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> in other news, what have the trap miners in Chile come a step closer to? Is it Christmas number one? <laughs> Could be, you know. Could. I think it's getting out, isn't it? It is, of course. It's yeah. getting out, and the good news is that Davina's going over for the evictions. <laughs> <laughs> is it not actually it's that the rescue pod has arrived, isn't it? The rescue the pod. The thing they that's going to pull them out has arrived. It's a lift. It's this thing is a lift, and it's got a microphone in it, so they can talk to the surface, and the surface can talk to them and say, we apologise for the cancellation of your lift service. <laughs> 
I, I read that in there that this thing that they're getting lugged up in is, is like a metal coffin. It said it had Wi-Fi access. So I think if I've been in a mine for two months, the last thing on my mind when I'm getting pulled up to safety is checking my emails. <laughs> Just being there being like, oh look, Jeff's been on Facebook, oh. he's thrown a bat at me. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. You can tweet. You can yeah. tweet like I'm in the cage, still in the cage. Yeah. How depressing though if you've been in there for two months, checked your emails, and you found you didn't have I'm any in. emails whatsoever. <laughs> They've been told as well to lose weight for, for when yeah. they get taken up. It's like, how do you put on weight when you're in a cave for two months? It's, it's like a coal mine. You're not going to suddenly turn around and be like, oh no, I've just found it. It's a Greg's. <laughs> 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 the next of the fat vein here that we've been mining for a while. They're being fed through, they're being th fed down a big pipe, right? So they have a very restricted diet. Meatballs, anything that can roll, really. That's what they got. <laughs> Prawn balls, Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> If they're, if they're still in there at Christmas, they're all getting a Terry's orange. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, are, are they fed like, like hamsters out? Do they walk to the thing and then take the pellet uh, and then another one falls down <laughs> and they go, Oh, I, got, I wanted the for a rush here. I got the meatball. Oh. Actually, they're building little cells for them to go into as soon as they come out of the ground to be checked up for, you know, medically. And also, they, they've told, they're only like little boxes. And they've said they could have two family members in there with them as well, just in case it wasn't cramped enough. <laughs> After they've just spent ages crammed down a hole, well, we're going to bring it out and cram you in another little box. Don't worry, we'll cram another couple of people in that you know, <laughs> just so you don't feel like too much of a sea change. Well, really, I mean, what do you expect to do? Just put out like a field for them just to run around in circles? <laughs> Figures of a wee! <laughs> 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 Yeah, just running yes. over the hill. Yeah, In short, yes. <laughs> and also, didn't that be two, uh, two family members? I mean, like most of them, it'll be agents and ghostwriters, uh, <laughs> and people going, "Good news, Javier Bardem is lined up to play you in the movie." Hey, <laughs> bad news, you got Omar Jalili. Uh, <laughs> they're all, they're all going to give them actual financial training, aren't they? They are. Yeah, they're yeah. giving them and media training as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I mean, let's face it, you don't need to have financial skills if you're one of those Chilean miners. If you want to be financially secure, all you've got to be able to do is fill in an overtime form <laughs> and you'll be laughing. <laughs> They've sent, they've sent them exercise videos so they can slim down so they fit through the hole. They sent them an exercise, they sent them exercise videos, but the first one they said, we don't want this one, the guy doing it is too ugly, right? If people who have been under the ground for seven weeks think you're too ugly, you are really ugly. <laughs> if you've been under the ground for seven weeks, Nick Knoll starts to look good. <laughs> There's a lot of speculation, isn't there, about what the very first thing they're going to do when they get to the surface is, you know. And obviously, the very first thing they're going to do when they get to the surface is this. Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features Boris Johnson and David Cameron. Ah, oh, tally-ho, look out, posh boy coming through. I, I wonder if there's any grub. I'm absolutely uh, starving. Now, uh, remember why we're here, Boris? We're here to reassure the public about spending cuts, not just so you can eat. No, but look, there's cake. There's cake. There's loads of cake. I love cake. They've got all sorts of cake. They've got pink cake. They've got blue cake. Uh, where am I? Am I pink? Am I blue? I, am I pink? I've never been pink. God, I sound like William Hague. Anyway... <laughs> All the cakes on uh, cameras, he's got loads of cash from the spending cuts. Actually, this is the last ten pounds left in Britain, so uh, we'd we'll best be careful with it. Well, I want a meringue. I love a meringue. I love all the cream in a meringue. Well, why don't you share mine? I mean, times are hard. Well, I could, I suppose, but, uh, but I have a rule. I have a rule. I, I, I never share anything, anything with another man. Unless, of course, unless, of course, it's his, uh, it's his, uh, it's his wife. <laughs> Careful, don't get any of the white stuff up there. No, that would be very bad. Anyway, <laughs> so do you, do you have any change? We were hoping to save some for the poor people. It doesn't really matter, but if there is some um, left over. Have you three pounds? Lovely, that's absolutely uh, perfect. God, there's a big crowd here. I wonder if I could, uh, I wonder if I could do them for the, uh, for the, uh, for the congestion charge. They absolutely <laughs> love me for the congestion charge. They love my blonde-haired buffoonery. They love me, they love me. Boys. Oh, yes, they love me. And they love me when I'm riding my bike. That's what they really love. Yes, oops. There we go. That's the Pakistani betting syndicate satisfied. <laughs> oh, look, lovely. 
Sticky fingers. Yes, I love a sticky finger. That's, uh, that's not the first. Oh, look, a genuine cockney. Hello, how are you? Oh, Lauren Lummy, who shot Cock Robin, apples and pears. <laughs> Down the old Tim Chimney and Mary Poppins, the Cray Twins, innit? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well done, you. The next round is called The Apprentice. You're fired Wednesday night, 10 o'clock, BBC Two. <laughs> this game involves Jack, Miles, and Andy, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launch a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And it's the economy. Andy Parsons. <laughs> I suppose we should be grateful we're not in Greece, things very bad there, there's rioting, things so bad, the austerity measures, that they can't even afford to put petrol in their milk bottles to chuck them. <laughs> things are so bad they're having to put milk in their milk bottles, that's how bad things are. Oi, take that, yeah, in two hours your clothes are going to smell really bad. <laughs> the European Central Bank, right, they have said that when it comes to Greece, they think it may be a bit like the Ebola virus, right? And they said we may have to cut off our leg to survive. Now, they may know a bit about finance. They know very little about the Ebola virus. <laughs> it affects your entire body. You cut your leg off, you've still got the Ebola virus. <laughs> you've just got one leg bloody less. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is clubbing. Who wants to talk about that? Maya. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm sure you can all tell I'm, uh, I'm a bit of a clubber. Uh, <laughs> nothing I like more than getting down to the local hotspot and uh, shaking the old batty and ting, a bit of a... <laughs> bit of shawaddy waddy um, Don't mind if I do. I... Uh, <laughs> I, no, I have tried nightclubbing. It's not really my thing. I'm a bit too delicate, my, my system. Uh, I was in a, in a nightclub recently. A, a fellow young raver danced up and shouted, I'm loving it, loving it, loving it! I replied, I'm finding it all a bit noisy, finding it all a bit noisy, finding it all a bit noisy. <laughs> people, uh, people jump around like crazy in those places. Uh, at one point, my cup and saucer was knocked clean out of my hand. <laughs> It's tricky. I mean, I've tried the dancing. That's not my thing either. I don't, I don't care if I haven't got sexy Latin rhythms. I've got a Latin A-level. Uh, much, <laughs> much more transferable in the job market. Um, <laughs> I was on the, uh, on the dance floor recently. A lot of my fellow young ravers were blowing whistles, so uh, I joined in and gave a bloody good pop on my bugle. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that meant half the Bosworth Hunt came charging in across the dance floor. <laughs> Pounds mistook three of the ginger students for foxes, and there was a hell of a mess. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Jack. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is health. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that is my gun. <laughs> so, we are in the midst of a, an obesity epidemic. And the people I blame, definitely, are the supermarkets. Because I don't think they're doing enough, right? Like, you go into any supermarket now and you buy food. If you care about what you put into your body, you look at the nutritional information. You know, the little wheel of guilt that every bag has on it now. That lures you in, doesn't it? Like, you buy something, like ice cream, it's like, this ice cream only contains 5% of your daily intake of calories. You're like, oh, that's very promising, I'll buy and eat the ice cream then. Then you look up a little bit closer, above the little wheel of guilt, tiny white writing, one-eighth of a tub. Oh, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. Put on the packet, whatever makes it sound good to sell the product, then make up a ludicrously unrealistic portion size, so I buy it like a twat. <laughs> that's like Greg's getting this sausage roll and it contains 2% of your daily intake of calories, <laughs> if you lick it. <laughs> I think what the supermarkets need to start doing is, is putting warnings on their packets of food, like they do with cigarettes. You buy cigarettes, it's got a horrible picture of like a lung caked in shit. You're like, oh, I don't want to smoke that. You should do it with food. Tesco's on cakes should just have pictures of, I don't know, a really fat woman crying as she walks out of Topshop empty-handed. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, what the hell? Points for everyone. Come on, come on, sit back down here.
Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Miles, which category would you like? Uh, sport, please. Okay, your category is mm. sport. And the answer is four days. What is the question? Um, at what age do Scottish children start drinking? <laughs> As a sport. <laughs> Is it the time it takes for light to travel around Eric Pickles? <laughs> Is it how long after becoming president would Sarah Palin nuke Iran? <laughs> how long can a Chilean miner make a tracker bar last for? <laughs> Is it uh, how long is classed as a quick go on the sunbed if you're a teenage girl from the Liverpool area? <laughs> is it... Is it if it took God six days to make the world, how long would it have taken him if he was Polish? <laughs> <laughs> is it if, if Nick Clegg got kidnapped, after how long would it take someone in Downing Street to say, ooh, no one's changed the ink on this printer? <laughs> How long does a bag for life normally actually last? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long did the Ryder Cup last? It is indeed. Oh, well done, thank you very much. You there. <laughs> the question I was looking for is how long did this year's Ryder Cup last? For the first time in its 83 year history, the Ryder Cup entered into a fourth day of play on Monday due to bad weather in Newport in Wales. The delay to the event, which is won by the European team in a nail biting finish, was caused by a succession of torrential downpours. Did any of you manage to tune into it all? I, I did manage to tune in. I tuned in whilst I was actually there because there wasn't any golf being played <laughs> <laughs> when I was in fact there. Turned up 9.45 a.m. on the Friday, just as play was suspended. £100 a ticket, no refund. The only bonus is that now we've mentioned it on this show, it is at least tax deductible. <laughs> To be fair to, to, be fair to Wales, a lot of people are going, oh my God, the people here are going, oh, how could you hold it in Wales? The entire country was being buckled on, like, and in poor old Wales is going, hey, it's not just here, you know, it's not just the rain stops because it's not, it hasn't got the £4.60 change <laughs> to cross the separate bridge, like, it doesn't get to this point and just dump down here, right? £4.60, so, things have changed since you went across the bridge, oh, really? 5 uh, now. 5 pounds. oh my Lord, Wales, yeah. you are pricing yourself out of the market. <laughs> 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 they actually, they, the, the Americans had to buy wet waterproof clothes from the souvenir stand, basically. Yeah. They had to just buy just stuff. And even Tiger Woods, I'm sure, would go, what, 300 quid for a wind cheese? And you are taking the piss. <laughs> it's ironic, isn't it? That's the one time in the entire history of the world where there wasn't a bloke standing there with a massive golf sale sign. <laughs> <laughs> They are making a fuss, though, about, like, what is... I mean, come on, like, oh, we can't play golf because there's a little bit of water on the green. I mean, I played a course at Alton Towers. There was a windmill in front of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, try that. That is hard. <laughs> Part four. The whole course flooded. Think how much worse it would have been if it didn't have all those holes in. When you saw all the water on the on the course, did you not think, well, the water looks lovely, the sand looks lovely, but the red flags are telling me I can't swim? <laughs> <laughs> what other big sporting event got underway this week? This is the story that the Commonwealth Games yes. has got underway. The opening ceremony, loads of drummers drumming. Apparently, just to mask the sound of actually the people who are building the rest of the stadium <laughs> on the outside. And there was, there was fireworks, which weren't actually fireworks, just somebody plugged in one of the scoreboards. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it? But do you remember the centrepiece? What was the other centrepiece? Was? It was a, a big helium balloon. balloon. It, was giant. it was the world's most expensive <laughs> helium balloon, which floated up, descending down, and then they burst it, and everyone was able to suck in something, and all 65,000 people went, Welcome to India! I didn't, I didn't see the opening ceremony, but it said in the paper that uh, Prince Charles gave a speech, and in the paper it actually said, Prince Charles read out the Queen's address. And I thought, how long did that take? <laughs> <laughs> Buckingham Palace, London, I, I can't remember the postcode. <laughs> also at the opening ceremony was the Minister for Delhi, Sheila Dixit. <laughs> how brilliant is that? An Indian called mm. Sheila. That is fantastic, isn't it? In other news, what's going on here? Is it the Great Wall of Chinese? 
is that is the, the world? It's the Guinness World Record attempt for the biggest game of musical chairs. Mm. <laughs> is that the world's most impressive motorcycle display team? <laughs> And that's only one bike as well. That's yeah. about. <laughs> what I love about that photo is in the far right hand corner, the bloke in white. Isn't that thing? <laughs> he's obviously got the wrong invite, hasn't yeah. he? There? He, no, I, 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 never got, I never got brown suit day memo. <laughs> uh, why is, he actually is very important in the North Korean army, he looks after the Milky Bars. <laughs> Is it, he's the one you're looking for. This is the very famous uh, North Korean children's book, Where's Woojin? <laughs> <laughs> You think he thought your version of Guess Who was hard? <laughs> Does he have black hair? Ah. <laughs> Does, Does he look a little like Kim Jong Il? No. <laughs> uh, Is it an attempt to show that they have some enormously tall people in Korea? <laughs> As a, as a stand-up comic, I just look at that and think, ooh, tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the unveiling in North Korea of Kim Jong Il Sun, Kim Jong Un, which looks definitely like Kim Jong Un, uh, <laughs> who's been there for the first time in his adult life, and there to the world for the first time in his adult life, and is reportedly being referred to as the young leader. Is it a, a North Korean magic eye picture? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you defocus your eyes, you can see a dolphin being oppressed. <laughs> My, um, my favourite moment of the whole World Cup was watching North Korea play um, Portugal on BBC Three and throughout the entire game there was a little caption in the top right hand corner that just read press red button now. I thought don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you not, do you not think everybody that Kim Jong-il is beginning to resemble Bono quite a lot? <laughs> sort of a weird little man with dyed hair and sunglasses continually, <laughs> continually spouting dreams while the rest of his countrymen wish he'd just shut up and die. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're very good. very good live, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're worried against them. They're very good in Wembley. Is it the first publicity shot of the acrobatic troupe that won Korea's Got Talent? <laughs> <laughs> the I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what they're not called. They're not called diversity. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Miles, Ed and Andy. <laughs> not, I think, unreasonably. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a TV detective show. The suspect has got a gun, but it's OK. Gaz has arrived and he's brought chicken and a fishing rod. <laughs> I'm not doing it. This is a midwinter murder. It's freezing. It's not in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see from the samples we've taken that we've scraped from under her fingernails, she was manky. <laughs> he were a policeman that got hit by a car and thought that he'd woken up in 1970. It were wrong. It were present day. This is CSI Hull. <laughs> Sergeant, if you look closely, there are semen stains all over these bed sheets. Let's book into the Holiday Inn instead. <laughs> <clears throat> Poirot, you've done it again. You've bored me shitless for the last two hours. <laughs> so that's it. At the end of a three-month investigation, that is it. It's Colonel Mustard in the living room with a lead partner. <laughs> Inspector, has anyone ever said that you look an awful lot like David Jason from Only Fools and Horses? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Markle, we've had the lab results back, and it's very interesting. Actually, it's thrush. <laughs> <laughs> he fits the profile. This is going to be a really boring episode of Hole in the Wall. You're probably wondering why I've asked you all to gather here in the library. Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> probably wondering why I've asked you to gather in the library. <laughs> it's the TV presenter, Noel Edmonds. Have you any idea why he was killed? It's the TV presenter, Noel Edmonds. <laughs> 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 
Ken Stott is Detective Inspector David Sod in Sod's Law. <laughs> well, we know now who's responsible for the killing. It's society, yeah? Yeah, you want to think about that, hmm? <laughs> The body is that of Eamon Holmes. We may need a little more chalk. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear from a sports commentator. So, just 80 metres to go, and the building of this running track will be finished. <laughs> and Ricky Hatton there. Bleeding heavily from the nose, this boy really knows how to party. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just getting the news that Usain Bolt's uh, ankle isn't actually sprained, it's broken. So the only thing to do is to collect some of his sperm and then shoot him in the head. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sky Sports, or if you're watching Sky Sports 3D... Hello and welcome! <laughs> Ah, the smack of leather on willow as Sue Barker walks into a tree. Meow! 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 The race hasn't started yet. I've just got a bit of a problem. <laughs> All of the drivers have their own little good luck rituals. This one's brought a tiny good luck troll. Oh, no, that's Bernie Eccleston. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to see what the referee gets out. I don't think any of us were expecting that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Man United team have turned up with the wrong kit, so today they're going to have to play in their pants. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his wood out and he's in a nasty bit of rough. He needs to get to the golf course as quickly as he can. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to say, I do agree with the crowd. The referee is a wanker. <laughs> Welcome to Delhi for the shit pit. Sorry, the uh, <laughs> shots put. <laughs> no, no, I was right first time. <laughs> Uh, you join me for the men's discus final. Women's? That's no woman. <laughs> and as the derby winner is led out by his jockey, the sexual tension is almost unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> so with one over to go, this next delivery could change everything. And it has. It's a no ball. I've won four. £100,000 <laughs> and I'm off to the airport. <laughs> oh, and that's a beautiful shot there on the black. I really should remember these boxers' names. <laughs> OK, Jim, that round. Points go to Ed, Andy and Mark. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis, and Jack Whitehall. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, and Miles Jupp. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Terry Wogan guests on The Rob Brydon Show tomorrow night at 10. No pressure there then, Rob. And there's more panel show comedy on BBC Three now. Simon Bird hosts The King Is Dead.